everyone and welcome to the third Balkan Film Week. Um, the Balkan Film Week uh, takes place as part of the Common Ground project, Literature from Southeast Europe. Uh, and this year's theme is Archipelago Yugoslavia from 1991 to today. What we have to say is also that this program that's taking place is also taking place as part of Leipzig Least Extra, which is a project, a uh, sort of reading festival organized by the Leipzig Book Fair. Now, uh, unfortunately, things have not changed a lot since uh, last year and last year's Balkan Film Night. So the whole Balkan Film Week this year is taking place exclusively online. So if you want more information on it, please just go to traduki.eu and there you'll find out more about that. But now let's just jump right into it. Uh, what do we have on offer this year? And uh, yes, I'd like to welcome our Balkan Film Week curator, Maria Katalinic. Hello, Maria. Hello, hi, Maria. How are you? As I've just said, it's a, it's a bit of a shame that yet again, we have to do this online. Uh, I remember last year during the Balkan Film Night, actually, we talked, okay, this is happening now and hopefully you know, in a couple of months, uh, we'll be able to go to the cinema again and enjoy ourselves. And yet here we are almost a year later. So, um, it just yeah, how has this been for you? And uh, yeah, just give us a, a, a bit of a rundown how things are in, on your end of the world. Well, you know, the greetings from Rijeka uh now ended who which ended its capital uh title of culture and so you know i'm saying this with a sad and uh, kind of way because of the pandemic that kind of prevented people from coming into the city and artists and whatnot but also because um as you said it's been almost a year and over a year uh, since we were able to come together and actually in Balkan Film Week last year, I was um, on the verge of coming and then, you know, it was like, okay, better not, things are happening. And I'm really sad that it was not able to uh, change in this year, but, you know, as long as we're making sure that everyone's staying safe and healthy, this is kind of uh, something this kind of life it, currently something maybe we can uh, learn something from. So uh, Rijeka is now improving. We were in quite a lockdown. Uh, and so as summer is coming, uh, let's see if, you know, things, everybody gets vaccinated and we can try to have kind of normal life if that's even possible anymore. Good to hear that at least somewhat, I guess, things are slowly opening up again. If we look at you know this year's theme for also the film week program archipelago yugoslavia from 1991 to today this year 1991 really was um, a major upheaval for many many people um not unlike for example let's say like what we're going through right now like it really takes the the normal fabric of life and how we live life completely apart just like you know complete um deconstruction of it uh, so, in your introduction text to uh, to the Balkan film, Week, you write that for you, this idea of archipelago Yugoslavia is to some extent a narrative about borders and the brokering of new borders. So, tell us uh, a bit about that. What you meant exactly uh, by by this definition of uh, archipelago Yugoslavia is borders. Well, when I first heard the, the title Archipelago, like Archipelago, it was something that, you know, kind of uh, clicked with the whole theme uh, because, it, you know, Archipelago as a term defines a cluster of small islands. So metaphorically, when thinking about this film week, you know, ex Yugoslav space resembles that cluster uh, since the 1990s, uh, well, throughout the 1990s because of the, uh, the war uh, situation. So islands, you know, for me as nations or as people are defined as matter within certain borders. Um, so, you know, as I'm saying this, I think it's important uh, that matter, that matters, you know, here uh, saying something within something is not defined uh, with borders per se, 
you know, such as identity and belonging, which has no borders, it's always open to receiving and exchanging. So politically, uh, borders attempt, they try to distinguish and correlate within those borders, those outside its borders. So, you know, we're seeing this a lot over the couple of years with my, you know, with refugee situation and migration, you know, it's us against them. So politically borders are used to separate, you know, um, kind of fortress wise. Um, so, but, you know, just to go back to what I said about identity, borders are, you know, not only defined as places of transit, there, you know, you can go from Croatia to Slovenia. And for, so it, this is a political act, but borders are space that's negotiated, you know, so um, this year's film selection really talks and mirrors uh, those places of bordering that kind of juxtaposes those political and which are defined by borders because, you know, state-wise, like state apparatus, but also, you know, the, the fake borders that we lived, live in through our identities, which we think, you know, if you are this set of person, you cannot, you know, correlate to another one. You cannot accept, but that's all, you know, very uh, negotiable. Um, now, looking at the program that we have this year, uh, which will take place over three days, I think there's really kind of a theme to each day. First day we have like the short film uh, in between by Samir Karahoda, and then that's followed by Yelena Maksimovic's uh, Homelands. Uh, and I think these two movies, to some extent, really kind of hark back to last year's theme of uh, origin and belonging, because they, there is this negotiating, not just of borders, but actually more of identity, you know, because they have passed through certain borders to now be somewhere else. And that kind of like brings along other questions about who they are or who they will be. Um, then when we look at day two, when we have uh, Micha Mazzini's Erased and also Yasmin Lajbanic, uh, For Those Who Can Tell No Tales, I think we really, I think that's actually the day when we um, talk about the topic of, you know, what happened in 1991 and the wars most directly, when we really kind of tackle the consequences and the aftermath of the breakup and the war, the wars that uh, it kind of just took over these parts uh, of Europe uh, in the 90s. And then on day three, uh, we actually moved to an even more broader theme, I think, because we also show a Bulgarian film. Uh, so on those on that day, we show um, Hanna Yushit's uh, Quit Staring at My Plate, and then uh, the Bulgarian film uh, Sofia Last Ambulance by Ilya Metev. Um, and there, I think we really look more at uh, these countries today and their struggles because of societal and economic changes and how that is influencing actually current life. So just looking at the program, tell us a bit about what drew you to specifically these six films that we will be showing. Thank you for presenting the films, you know, and you you uh, clarified it so well with this uh, three, let's say, uh, levels or uh, points of how they uh, come together. So, you know, there is a sea of films that have been made since the 1990s until uh, today. What in like local productions or, you know, with uh, foreign or foreign meets local co-productions. And it's very hard actually uh, to, because I wanted to find films that don't present violence directly because actually what I, what all of us, um, not only that come from ex Yugoslav space, but even, you know, in a wider uh, discourse of trauma, heritage and history know, uh, which makes pretty much everyone is that those lingering side effects that happen after conflicts or of any sort, whether it's on a personal level or political level, is something that actually jumps back into our lives, perhaps not the same generation that has to live through it, but in the second and third. And so uh, I was thinking there is uh, more and more movies, which is fantastic, made by young directors that reflect not necessarily those uh, happenings of war, but more how 
their notion of who they are does not correlate to the reality they live in. And reality is a side effect of those happenings of the 1990s. So it's, you know, the discussion about uh, nationhood, identity, uh, trauma, conflict is now taking a different uh, layering, like a different uh, a, a view of, you know, what was that happened and what is that's now happening and how is that affecting uh, the new generations and generation we live in now. Uh, and so, and also uh, just to go a step back and also giving those generations that were active in those very uh, painful and, and violent acts, um, maybe a space to look back, to reflect, you know, to, to see how they feel in then and now. And so the movies that are here uh, for this year are kind of like, just a skim uh, of all of those films, but at the same time provide a lens into uh, emotions and narratives that happened, you know, in the 1990s and, and onwards. Now, the last uh, movie that we will show, uh, Sophia's Last Ambulance, I think will probably um, really um, like strike a chord with a lot of people watching it because I think it to some extent uh, talks about a topic that's been in the news um, quite a bit because of what we've been going through uh, the past year, namely uh, the situation of the healthcare system and uh, how it's kind of crumbling um, under, well, what, we've, what, we're, what we're all going through. On the other hand, I'm also kind of opposed to this uh, idea of uh, that you know the pandemic is the reason why healthcare systems across Europe are kind of like you know just crumbling and falling apart and uh, not being able to cope with what's what's happening. I think the interesting part is that Sophia's last ambulance, which um, follows one of like Sophia's last ambulances across uh, the Bulgarian capital. I think the movie, from what I understand, was actually um, shot in 2012, 2013. I'm not quite sure. Um, and already then, you know, it was shown that, you know, the healthcare system is not what it should be. And I think we could almost say the same thing for um, healthcare systems almost across Europe. You know, I mean, I think especially in the past 30, 40 years, actually, unfortunately, a lot of politicians uh, have actually worked uh, at dismantling it. Um, so tell us why it was important for you to, to really also pick this movie, uh, which is, you know, not, doesn't, doesn't perhaps, you know, necessarily fit Archipelago Yugoslavia quite in the way, but I think there is this deeper connection why it makes sense to have it in this program. Well, yeah, so I mean, just to go back a little bit on the, the borders and borderless, you know, yes, Archipelago, Yugoslavia as a metaphor and as a sense of what happened uh, is spot on. However, as I mentioned before, you know, uh, trauma and like, as you said, uh, bad healthcare, it's not necessarily tied to ex Yugoslav space. And so all the movies we talked about before are, can correlate because of certain events that happened 30 years ago, but at the same time, they exist, you know, internationally, transnationally. And so uh, it's, you know, we need to escape. So there is always this question of, uh, and why I think the discussing about Balkan as a, a term, as a region, as a, um, the other, as you want, you know, is important because we need to figure out how to escape it. And at the same time, um, work through it and with it. So it's escaping and being in that's constantly in this dialogue. And so, as you said, with, uh, you know, Sofia's last ambulance, it, it responds to those questions of uh, fragility, uh, of vulnerability, of those sense that is uh, even, you know, trying to stay alive, which is very tied to, uh, the notion of healthcare that now it has been shown is uh, not only tied to the Balkan region, but is borderless, unfortunately. So, you know, 
the, so the documentary, as you mentioned, really depicts the story of a country, but you know, specifically to the to uh, Bulgaria, that lingers uh, between its neoliberal transitional future and its attempt to maintain its social heritage, you know, uh, free and uh, available healthcare, which is something that everyone uh, wants and strives. But it is a frustrating story, even uh, with that notion of, you know, socialist heritage that provides free healthcare, because it reveals the system flaws and the victims are necessarily, you know, health workers, patients, uh, people, the everyday people. So it really pains me, as you said, that it's not the story that used to be not necessarily and not at all uh, truthful to uh, the to the region that is now showing it's not only a part of Southeast Europe or Balkan, but you know, global. So as we saw with the pandemic in Italy, you know, England, all of these countries who have better financial gain were unable to actually provide. Uh, a responsive uh, healthcare for all. So uh, this movie, you know, this documentary is something that again tries to uh, shift the idea that of what the you know Balkan region has, carries, or lives to that which it doesn't only for itself. So um, it's a more again transnational view of all those things. I think to some extent it kind of like also like uh, goes back uh, to what we have been discussing last year, you know, like origin and belonging and what is your identity, where does it stop, where are its, its borders and boundaries and limits. Um, and I think last year you actually said that, um, I think you you talked about identity as, you know, something you add to, you know, you're this, you're this, it's a plus, it's a plus, it's a plus, it's not actually the lacking of things. Um, and also what you've just said about um, not wanting to be constrained just by, you know, this uh, hashtag Balkan, this is what I am or whatever. Um, I do feel that, yes, um, to some extent, we, we all to some extent try to, ex ex it, well, not escape it, but I think we, we definitely want to be more. And also what you just said about the movies, you know, that yes, they speak about things that happened in the Balkans or that happened in Croatia or in Bosnia or, or in other places. But in the end, all of these movies, the reason why we also pick them is because they have a more broader international universal, you know, truth to them. I mean, if you look, for example, at um, for those who can uh, tell no tales, I'm pretty sure like, if you think back, for example, at India's partition or uh, the novel uh, Train to Pakistan, you will find, you know, similarities, the same struggles, the same reasons or the same brokering of, uh, of new borders. So I think we always have this thing that, um, I mean, it's with every good art. If it's good art, you know, it will be universal. It's not just, you know, sticking to the one place that uh, we're trying to, to explain to others. Um, but yeah, having talked a bit now about the movies, and I know this might be a bit of a personal question to you, but I think we're kind of the same age. So probably when uh, Yugoslavia fell apart in 1991, I guess um, you probably experienced it as a child or as a teenager. So it also most certainly redefined, you know, the your borders, you know, they were newly brokered. And um, how did this, if it's not too personal a question again, did this define you, um, uh, as a person or like what were your experiences you know around what happened in the 1990s and its aftermath as you said before you know just to go a step back so you know the position of being in an audience in a cinema or now in front of your computer you know thinking about archipelago is that you are you know there are two worlds but what cinema does and what's fantastic is that that subject there is this you know coming together of subjectivities uh, from both sides that then enters your story. And then, you know, that's something that's again, uh, negotiated. So as in, you know, for those who can tell no tales, you know, the protagonist enters a, another, you know, someone else's uh, reality, subjectivity and becomes her. So this is kind of like, I just want us to think about all these uh, processes that happen uh, when we're a part of uh, the cinematic spectacle. So, but to go back to your question, 
you know, I, as you said, uh, and I agree, I personally really struggle with national identification. Um, you know, I was raised in, in Rijeka, it's an industrial city then, now it's post-industrial, I could say. Um, that community really resembled to something, uh, and maybe I'm being nostalgic, but uh, really kind of had this sense of something that Sara would once had, or most had, you know, like all these communities living together, no one's identity was everyone's identity and everyone's identity was everybody's identity so it was it was really kind of this beautiful exchange and so i think our generation was again to kind of put it uh outside of as you said the hashtag kind of sense you know our generation was raised with culture that bordered with uh western culture as much as it did with yugoslav culture you know we would um, uh, we knew of MTV equally as we knew of uh, Toplista and Atrealista, which was like a fantastic way that the Yugoslavian culture uh, remixed those from, let's say, the Western uh, part, which was like Monty Python. So, and, and those things that, that were created culturally really are significant and still until today are, uh, you know, well done so everyone can still enjoy it so that's kind of i think that heritage that we have that's kind of a remix of of all of these things um and so but i have to say that i really started uh, to enter more complex negotiation uh, of my identity when i started living abroad and you know uh within the community that either had to escape the region because of the war or they willfully left because of the war or you know uh to gain or to you know remove themselves uh, and this this you know discover who they are um, outside of that place where as as you said that was uh, last year's origin and belonging. Um, so for me, let's say that for me the diasporic archipelago is something um, that I discovered uh, that kind of carries the Balkan notion and it weights it down and it brings it together. And so it's it's a really um, a mix, a cluster of feelings and experiences that you're always, you know, for me, I'm always supported. You know, it's like my family, uh, let's say, that lives in Berlin. They're equally my family, very strong as the one I have personally, the one I was born in, um, but the one that allows me to kind of openly negotiate this identity up and down so it's yeah some days it's very clear some days it's completely not and but that's i think the beauty of it most definitely i mean i think um i think it was a writer or a journalist that once saw a, a literary festival and he kind of in a very it wasn't a cheeky way but he said you know that identity is opportunistic um and i I kind of had to laugh at it because it, it looks like a very loaded statement, but if you look at it in a more fun kind of super fun way, it really just means that, you know, we have so many things inside us. And like, you know, when I go to Austria or when I'm in, in Ljubljana or when I go to Spain, you know, there's a different side of me that kind of gets underlined. And uh, and yeah, in that sense, yeah, I guess it is opportunity because you kind of, uh, but uh, there was also, I think, the, uh, the writer uh, Jen Carson recently, because she was reflecting on uh, the centenary of Northern Ireland. And she said, you know, when it comes to identity, I'm greedy. I'll have all the, I'll, I'll have everything. I'll be this and that and that. And it's, I guess, also very kind of, it's a positive twist to this. You know, what am I? Well, I'm greedy. I'll have everything. You know, it's a buffet. I'll, if, I, if it's possible, I'll, I'll just have everything. And, uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah. I kind of really like this idea of being greedy about your identity, just having as many, you know, <laughs> labels as possible. Well, it, it is also a privilege, you know. Uh, Definitely, yes. So uh, to, cap, to juggle with identities is uh, a juggle in a sense that, as you said, uh, quoting opportunistic for it, it is yeah, it's it's a it's a privilege. So especially for women, you know, for people who are um, maybe you know uh, minorities left down by by nations or by system, they have no choice often in who they see or they want to be. They are very placed down, and to be able to um, kind of escape that 
it takes a lot of a lot of power and something that I I've been here in the aircraft for four years so back in Croatia and what I can say is that um, what I learned is that it takes a lot of strength and and really a lot of energy to negotiate your freedom and yourself constantly in those spaces that don't give that kind of like air or that uh, buffer because there is really this archipelago especially in you know in this region this notion this fear you know that kind of separates uh, people uh, as people or as nations and something and really uh, this is something that I hope and what you know all of the festival is doing is opening up those stories, like showing them, exposing them, connecting people through them, and really just like, you know, everyone narrating their own truth and subjectivity until bringing something bigger together. Really, I mean, that was, um, it was beautiful, beautiful words for like wrapping all of this up. Uh, thank you again so much for being with us. Uh, and I don't want to jinx it, so I'm not gonna say anything about next year. <laughs> so. In the meanwhile, for everyone watching, uh, as I've said, in a couple of minutes, you can watch the first movie of this year's program uh, in between by Samir Karahoda. Again, the full program is uh, on our website. Just go to truduki.eu. A big thank you goes to all the distributors and everyone else involved in kind of making this, uh, this film week happen, uh, especially the Ute Konovitz, uh, who... I mean, they were wonderful in helping us uh, with like the program and the organization. And I do hope again, I don't want to jinx anything, so I'm not going to say anything, but I hope that, you know, in the future, things will be uh, able to be done differently again. And yes, most importantly, don't forget the Balkan film is part of our bigger program, Archipelago Yugoslavia. Um, so yes, yeah, starting this first day, you can also enjoy a lot of interesting uh, literary events. Uh, and I think one of the first one will be with Lana Bastasic. So uh, you should definitely be looking forward to that. Um, have I forgot anything? I don't think so. Uh, again, thank you, Maria. You were wonderful as always. Um, and yeah, to everyone um, watching, enjoy the, the Balkan Film Week and we'll see you online, I guess. <laughs> Thank you and bye-bye.